how does this all unfold? What's going to happen to Gigafactory next? So step one is the facility is going to ramp to output of 35 gigawatt hours per year and so that they can supply up to the capacity of 500,000 Model 3s and Model Ys per year. Now, this may leave a lot of you scratching your heads about like, what is next for Tesla? What is the next move here? Because technically they have said this capacity, the factory, the Gigafactory could have a capacity of 150 gigawatt hours, you know, basically a quintuple from where it's at today or where it's planned to be at at the end of 2019. So where are we going to do this? And Elon Musk on the conference call has also mentioned that at the Battery Investor Day, they're going to unveil a roadmap to hit a terawatt hour of, of uh, energy storage or battery production. And that's the type, you know, when I talk about changing the world, getting us off of fossil fuels, we need to massively ramp up the amount of batteries we are pumping out to really move the needle and make a difference here. Um, and so that's is, is the technology that Tesla's going to unveil at its battery investor day. Now the question is, there's been a ton of tension in the news. The Wall Street Journal, I, as much as, okay, Wall Street Journal actually had a really good article about the sort of tensions and with Panasonic and Tesla, the Gigafactory. Um, and I'm a little less scratching my head about it too. Um, I asked some questions, didn't really get much clarity here about what the planned expansion is. They wouldn't tell me. And that's kind of one thing I'm scratching my head. Of. Like the semi truck is going to need a huge amount of batteries. Uh, you know, the beyond Model 3 and Model Y, the pickup truck, like where are we, you know, the stationary storage business, like we should be thinking about how to add battery capacity already, especially if we want to go from 35 hours to a terawatt hour. So why are they being so quiet about it? Why is it not just a cookie cutter, let's go with Panasonic and build another 35 hours worth, 35 gigawatt hours worth of lines just the way we're doing with all that new growing machines. Well, I think there's been some fraying. In this Wall Street Journal article that I was reading, they even say that after Tesla went profitable, Panasonic said for the new lines, they actually wanted to raise the prices because Tesla could pay more. They also say in that Panasonic article that Tesla was originally planning, or in this Wall Street Journal article, that Tesla was planning to actually build its own battery cells before even starting the Gigafactory, but then realized that was way too much work. So. I, frankly, what I think is happening is the, the, the value that Panasonic is bringing is very, very commoditized. Uh, the ability to build these basically standard lithium ion batteries. And I think Tesla has talked so much about bringing its destiny in its own hands. If I had to think about what they're doing at Battery Investor Day, why did they buy High Bar Systems, a Canadian manufacturer of basically how to build lithium ion cells? Why did they buy Maxwell Technologies, a company that has you know, perfected this process of how to build new lithium ion cells with the dry battery electrode? Why are they hiring people to do you know, battery cell engineering? Uh, you know, why are they being so quiet about you know, confirming to ramp with Panasonic. And we also have um, the Jeff Don Million Mile Battery, which was done on a pouch style battery that indicated robo taxis. So there's, anyway, my point is there is so, so much swirling about how Tesla goes from 35 gigawatt hours to a terawatt hour. What is the technology? Are we just gonna go all the way to a terawatt hour of production with just more 2170 lithium ion cells? Or is there a new, entirely new type of battery that Tesla's been working on, that they're developing, that they're gonna build themselves? And that's why they've been making these acquisitions. That's why they've been quiet. That's why they're not letting the hood off what is happening until battery train and investor day, because what they're gonna announce at that investor day, this is just my kind of theory of putting this all together, is a revolutionary new type of battery technology where they're gonna vertically integrate, build the cells themselves, and that is the new type of battery pack that will be used for things uh, like the semi truck. And so that's kind of my speculation. But on the flip side, I also think it's it's so fascinating. I, I just the breakneck pace of innovation. That's one thing that I think is is the, the underlying theme of this Tesla Panasonic sort of beef is that Panasonic's just like okay, we're gonna pump out these twenty one seventy cells. And, and Tesla's like great, those are those were awesome for the Model Three, but we're already thinking about the next type of battery production cell. You guys need to be driving down costs, not raising prices on us. Like there's just this backwards mentality. And I think frankly, Tesla's technology is moving way faster than Panasonic. And when I think about Tesla, watching them grow up th throughout the years, think about what Fremont is. Like they, they were, these Silicon Valley guys decided to buy a car factory and try and build cars. Of course they messed up. Of course it like, there was all these issues, but they figured it out. The 10, a huge improvement over GA3. What they're gonna build in China, a huge improvement over the 10. I think this this was a company with an amazingly group smart of software people, engineers that tried to bite off way more they can chew with vehicle production, learned so much from it, is applying that knowledge, and frankly is now leapfrogging the industry. If this is where the industry was, Tesla starts from zero, they do the Fremont assembly line, they get here, their next generation production line is going to get them here, above the industry, which is staying flat. I think that's exactly the same thing that is happening with the battery technology um, and, and you know the Gigafactory. It's like, okay, they set this up, now they've got the growing machines doing it, um, now when you take speculation about what what are they going to do in China? They've said every Gigafactory going forward is going to have battery production too. We've already got rumors that in the Chinese Gigafactory, they're building a secondary building. My take on this is the first building is for vehicles. The building number two that they're building now is going to be where they're going to be building these battery cells or pumping out the 2170 cells um, and the battery packs.